as you can see from the title, we are going to be discussing the Curver tool. Now, Victor Perez, he outlines this tool really well in their YouTube channel, but I'm going to take it a step further. This tool works extremely well for bitmap. Um, he uses an octopus arm, which gives a very organic movement to this bitmap artwork. I have here a arm from a human. And what we can do is we can make it look like a normal vector base rig, but we can take a little bit further and add something to it, which is an elbow movement. Uh, as far as I know, I haven't seen anyone do anything like this yet with bitmap images. Correct me if I'm wrong, there could be something out there, I just haven't seen it. But I thought this was a really cool use of this technology, having the ability to bend the arm and the elbow as well. So if somebody gave you some artwork and they said recreate this character and all you had was a bitmap image or bitmap layers of that character, you could get away with doing something like this to where the character could have this movement and they wouldn't feel so rigid, rigid and stiff. I think this is amazing and it's so beautiful the way that it's, it's created. There's some really cool things that you can do with it as well. So for instance, if I was to create a new vector layer, and then I put that layer in here and I don't know, let's say we gave it like some kind of a bracelet. Maybe we made it like a punk rock bracelet. Once you get your artwork right where you like it, we can attach this to our rig. Not to our bones, but to our rig. You could attach it to your bones if you want. But the way that we do this is you double click your layer, come to vectors, and right down here there's something called select warp layer. And we're going to attach it to our curver. And when you hit OK, um, it all works. Oops. It all works. Right? That is attached to it. We have movement. It's kind of squashy, which might not be the effect that you're going for. Now you might be saying, Jared, that's cool, but it's not that cool. Well, check this out. If we select that same layer, let's say that we wanted that character to have, I don't know, maybe some spots on his arm. These potentially could be tattoos or of some kind. I don't know. It's your artwork. Let's say we just made it a little bit darker. Whoops. All right, and then we took the stroke off. Check this out. Are you ready? Boom. We have movement, and that attaches to that bitmap artwork. And that's because it's all using the same curver layer, which is manipulating the same artwork. Isn't that so cool? We could take it even a little bit further. The reason that I really love this tool is because it's versatile. If I was to import another bitmap image, so import general import, look at this. I've got a bitmap arm. It looks kind of crazy, but that's okay. If I double click this artwork and I go image, select warp player and put it to curver instantly, just like that, I have now rigged up this artwork just like that. So you could potentially create one universal rig swap out the layers as you need and create multiple characters from this one rig very easily. This is awesome. There are some limitations. The cool thing though is you can do this with vector artwork as well. For instance, I have an arm right here and this arm is also attached to the rig. The limitations on vector-based art are much greater than bitmap art. You can see right here it's breaking. That's not ideal. This has all the same qualities as the, as the bitmap art. You can 
import other vectors, double click the artwork, and then get it going right away on that curver. That's great. That's wonderful. But you can see the one major challenge. Now I have tried every which way to solve this. I've tried masks. I've tried changing the artwork. Ideally, what I would love to have happen is I'd love for the, the curver to read the vector artwork the same as it reads the bitmap artwork. Um, and because the bitmap is being manipulated from the edges or all the artwork together, it doesn't have the same problem that this has. Uh, you can see that the way that it breaks the arm right here, it's manipulating the vectors themselves. But if I open up, let's say this artwork here, you can see it gives a nice crease at the elbow. My challenge to you is that if you can figure out a way to fix this, not by manipulating the artwork, but a universal fix to where all I have to do is import new artwork and it works perfectly. If you can figure that out without manipulating the artwork, it could potentially be a mask. Whatever you could come up with that works. The first person to do that and to explain themselves in the comments or shoot me an email, they're going to get full access for free to OK Animate. That's right. Any current lessons, any future lessons, you're going to get them. You'll be a part of that school for life. That's my challenge. Show me you can do it. Show me what you can do. And please help me out because I think this is so cool. I would love for it to be like, this potentially could be my new way of rigging if it works. Now with all that out of the way, let me show you how this actually works and recreate it for you so you know how to do it yourself. We're going to do it with a bitmap image because I think bitmap is a little bit easier to use and it just works better. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over and then I'm also going to just in case go to bone, release all bone and rigging. So the first thing that you're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just create a curver. So on frame zero, we're going to go to draw and then I'm going to create comprehensible curver layer. And I'm going to take one point, hit T, drag it to the top of the shoulder, and then drag this to the bottom of the wrist and just straighten all these things out. All right. And unfortunately, I don't have any uh, reference points to show me where my elbow or shoulder joints are. So I'm just going to go ahead and guess. There's a little line here where I can see that that's probably where my my um, circle's center point is. So I'm going to go ahead and put a shape there. Right here where it gets really tight, I'm going to guess that's the elbow. And then right maybe around here, I'm going to guess that's the center of the wrist. All right. So now we have a curver that is manipulating our artwork. So this is working perfectly. The next thing that we're going to have to do is we need to create some bones. So on frame zero, I'm going to create a new bone and I'm going to drag all my uh, elements inside that bone. And because I do need those reference points for the curver points, what you can do is right click your curver layer, go to quick settings. And what we're going to be doing is selecting this path. And this is going to allow the path to stay visible while we set up our bones. So now that I go to my bone layer, I can see my points. So I'm just going to grab my bone tool. I'm going to start here at the shoulder and I'm going to pull and drag down to the elbow. I can hold shift because my artwork is pretty straight. And then I'll go down to the wrist. And then one last thing, I'm going to hit B, select the upper part of the arm. Um, and then I'll hit A. And then this is going to allow me to put one more bone right there. All right. Then I'll hit B and escape. 
A again, because I'm going to put a bone right here at the wrist. And I'm going to call it wrist. Then I'll hit B, and I'll call this one elbow. Alright, so now we just need to set up our bones to work. So if I select my forearm bone, I'm going to come to inverse kinematics and attach it to the wrist. I'm also going to set the scale to 200 just to give us some nice stretch. I'll select the upper bone, set that to 200, and we should be good. The last thing that we have to do is just attach those curver points to our bones. So with this upper part of the arm selected with B, I'm going to hit G and drag and select. I'm sorry. Now I got to select my select my artwork, not the artwork, the curver tool. So with that selected, I can hit G, select the upper parts of that curver. We'll select this little guy here, which is the bind points tool, and we're going to bind those points. Then I'll hit B, select my elbow, G to select that point there. Then I'll bind those points. And then lastly, we select the forearm. And what we'll do is hit G, select those wrist points, and we will bind those points. So remember, it's the forearm, not the wrist. So now when we move forward, let's take a look at our rig. There we go. We have movement, and it moves beautifully. And again, just like all the other ones, if we were to import another file, general import, let's say something like that, all we would have to do is pull it into our bone layer, double click the artwork, and set these, the warp image to artwork, whatever your warp's called. Mine's called arm artwork 2 PNG warp. And just like that, it works again. Okay. Well, this is just to get the ball rolling. Some food for thought. I thought this technique was really, really cool. I think it could be a very powerful thing, especially if we can figure out that kink with the vector artwork. So if you have any ideas on how to fix that, please comment down below, share your thoughts. And also, if you want to learn some rigging techniques and practices, or even how to create this character here, check out the links below and you can find out more information about my rigging course on Moho. Thanks for watching, guys.